Well, joining me in studio now is Jeremy Sultan, a political advisor to Naftali Bennett's Yamina party. And Jeremy, if I can take issue with the prime minister a little bit, politics is certainly in part a game. And is the game up for this government? The game is is going to continue going, at least, you know, for the next foreseeable future. I believe this will be the first year since 2018 that we do not see an election during the calendar year. We have this time period that starts tomorrow, goes until the end of July, in which we will have votes. But once we survive that patch, if you will, of the next eight weeks or so. We end up in a three month recess. We don't come back till after the Jewish high holidays. We're talking about the end of October. The main challenge we have in this particular session when it comes to the summer is to pass the budget, a one year budget in its first reading. If we're able, go ahead and just do that one task. All of the other stuff is just gravy. And I feel that we will be able to do that, advance it and kick, if you will, the ball down the line until we get to that point where we're able to spend time figuring out ways to expand this coalition once again. Well, I think most people would agree with you. It's not the first reading of the budget that would topple this government. But I had Amichai, your old colleague, Amichai Chikli, party colleague in that seat last week, who agrees. He thinks with, uh, within Yamina is now sort of stabilized. The weak link, he says, is, as Owen says, the ROM party. And of course, let's get the substance. The Temple Mount is an issue. We know that the prime minister is working on some kind of arrangement there. Rahm is making its demands. How is this going to be resolved? I think it will be resolved the, the same way a majority of issues have been resolved. And, and that's not in the TV studios, okay? That's, that's, behind, <laughs> that's behind closed doors. Look, uh, Mansour Abbas wants to very badly bring uh, a lot of reforms and achievements to his constituency. He's only passed one piece of legislation in final reading so far, and we're almost a year into the government. He has a lot of things in the pipeline. He's already paid the political price in terms of accepting a lot of things in order to advance his own legislation. This is an opportunity for him to take those pieces of legislation, bring them to fruition, and actually get them passed. For him to back down now would really be taking a huge investment and in walking away before actually reaching the last hand. But as we've seen, sometimes, as we've seen with your own party, uh, Jeremy, sometimes a party leader does not have full control over his troops. And there are members of the Ram party who seem to hold more radical views than Mansour Abbas does. I mean, is he going to be able to carry all of those people? I mean, one of them just out of a protest may decide uh, not to support that first reading of the budget because either of the Temple Mount issue or now the government's intention to approve, for example, new building in, uh, in, in the West Bank and Judea and Samaria settlements. I mean, those particular people that you're talking about, they're the ones that authored a lot of those pieces of legislation that are stuck at the moment. Look, you know, politics is, is a place where you try to get things done. If you decide that you don't want to be a player and you don't want to be a part of the game, then you're not going to be able to get anything out of the game. The more problematic members, as you would call them, within the ROM party, they have pieces of legislation that are currently at the committee tables. We can advance them, bring them to the palladium, and advance them into law and, you know, give them actual achievements to go when we ever do have elections to their own constituency, or they can be the very reason that they never advance anything. I think a majority of people, when you look at it and you look at the track record of the last year, are willing to make a deal. And again, it might not happen here. We'll, we'll have lots of great conversations about what people might do or what they might not do. But look, no one gave this government Two weeks. I remember when we were sitting in Knesset Correct. during the inauguration. You guys didn't even know if we were going to be able to, to get the opening vote I, and, and get sworn into office. So I would tell a lot of people who are trying well, to eulogize us to well, call not down eulogize a little bit. us. Any possibility, Benjamin Netanyahu still in the wings? Is there any possibility of some kind of deal cut between this government and the Likura, let's be honest, with Benjamin Netanyahu? I, I don't see what kind of a deal could be made there. Look, the joint list, they're not going to join a coalition with Benjamin Netanyahu here. I don't see any way to get to 61 MKs supporting a Benjamin Netanyahu premiership. I mean, if you look actually at the no confidence motion that we're going to deal with tomorrow, the first test of this government, 
It's Yaakov Mergi from Shas who is the candidate for prime minister because the Likud even realizes they can't get the joint list to get on board to try to support Netanyahu in returning to power. We can pretend, if you want, that Netanyahu has a path to go back, but Netanyahu's only path is to take us to another election. To do so when we have 72 right-wing MKs, this is the most right-wing Knesset of all time, will be something that will be remembered, I believe, for generations generations if he decides to put us in that direction. Of course, if Netanyahu decides to stop holding the entire country ransom and go home, then perhaps there is another government we can talk about. But don't hold your breath. He's not going to go. Okay, so we're going to continue in this same deadlock that we've been in for the last number of years. But like I said, unfortunately for the Likud, 2022 will not be an election year. We will get through the rest of this summer session starting tomorrow through the end of right. July, and then we will go back and do it again in October. If it doesn't work at the end of October, then we'll talk about possible dates in 2023. But I think it's going to be the other way. It's a lot much. It's a lot easier for us to get from 60 to 61 than where he is to get from 54 to 61. Uh -huh. And new elections is something that I just don't see happening. It's just not in the cards okay. and there are not enough people looking for that. Uh, but it does sound as if though new elections in the in the next year you see it when uh, you know we'll be looking at a change of uh, Naftali Bennett handing over the government supposedly a yellow pee we see that as a possible August August 27th of 2023 is when the rotation is supposed to happen not that I'm counting the days that Bennett is, is still in office but I'm saying even if we were to look in the type of situation where uh, if you will the Netanyahu and opposition people are looking towards where we have the budget going till the end of March, and then we have a snap election. Bet it's going to be prime minister till August 27th of 2023 in most scenarios, especially if Ram decides to leave the coalition. Right, we'll watch you. We'll see if that's developed. But I have to say, you've, you've defied the skeptics until now, Jeremy, here in the studio. We'll see if you keep that streak going up. Jeremy Salton, thank Thanks. you. Thank you for joining us.